What up, Canes fans? Before we get started, just wanted to talk to you guys about the Tank Brewery real quick. The Tank is located in the heart of Miami in Dade County at 5100 Northwest 72nd Avenue. This place is awesome. I've been there. The beer is outstanding. The food is great. Whether you're watching the Canes game, the Heat game there with your buddies, you're having a guys night out, or you're having a date night with the missus. It's a great place to hang out. So you can order online at the tankbrewingtakeout.com or call them at 786-801-1554 for delivery or pickup. And here's the thing. If you use the promo code tank up, you will get free delivery on game days. And so that is tank fours up the number four, not spell it out, but tank four S up. So Go check out our friends at the Tank Brewing. They've been great to us, so take it away, Jordan. All right. Also, uh, we we want you guys to check out our guy, Stickers by AB. That's at S-T-I-C-K-E-R-Z by AB. Um, you know, I've been ordering a bunch of stuff from him. Um, you know, we we have a collaboration sticker that, that uh, has our logo on it. Um, so make sure you're checking him out. Uh, give him a follow on Twitter. He's just a good dude, and he's helping us design our merch. So, uh, so yeah, man, it's, it's uh, make make sure you're supporting the good people that that help us out here on Fours Up. You're listening to the Fours Up podcast with your host Marsh. What up, what up, what up, Canes fans? It has been a while, but we are back. It is the Fours Up podcast. It is. Tuesday, December 22nd. Ho, 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 bitches. Um, <laughs> as always, I'm joined by my wonderful producer and co-host, Jordan Nelson. Jordan, it's been a minute. How are we? How are you feeling? How's the fam? How's everything going? Everything is good. I'm still recovering from the UNC. The I mean, what would you call it? That wasn't a loss. That was like... That was a demoralizing we, defeat that offended not just the University of Miami. It offended my family. It offended myself. <laughs> It offended was, everybody that ever put on the orange and green and ever rooted for them. We My were brutalized. <laughs> we were brutalized. I we should be able to like file charges with the police about what happened. The, uh, bro, I, let me. I, and I know that people are kind of starting to get over this loss, but we haven't recorded since. And good lord, exactly. um, just being in that stadium for that game. I went with our boys, A.B., I went with Brad, I, I, you know, I saw Derek Coe there, I saw the Borregales family. It was fun being back in Hard Rock Stadium up until kickoff. Yeah. It was Cause... so bad. It, it, and, and with, because that was my first game going to since, like, COVID and everything like that, it yeah. felt like a funeral service in there. There was no energy. I remember, yeah. like, me, Coe, Brad, and A.B. were, like, in the end zone when they came out of the smoke. And I swear to God, we were the only ones standing, and Manny was, like, yelling at everyone to get up. I, I At that point, I kind of felt like there there was just something wrong. Even yeah. before that, I kind of had a bad – I know I predicted us to win and win by, like, two touchdowns, but still, in the back of my mind, I'm like, you know what? UNC has this dynamic offense and passing yeah. game, but it wasn't the passing game that tore us to shreds. 500 and 57 yards of rushing did that. Yeah. Um, so How does that happen? Yeah, I don't, dude, I don't know. Like, I, I legitimately, I kid you not, I turned the game off at halftime and I didn't turn it on again. I left at halftime, so it's all good. Yeah. I, so, I, it was I, so, it was so demoralizing that it took all of my views of Manny and this team to what we had accomplished up until then. And it, it shattered it. Yeah, I agree. Um, you know, I think I said either on our previous episode or two episodes ago that I had 100% confidence in Manny. And that was severely rattled. Like, I'm I'm not ready to fire him. Um, but, I mean, I guess zero to 100%. I don't know what at what point you fire a guy. Let's say it's at zero, you fire him, right? Yeah, I went from a hundred two weeks ago to probably thirty percent. Um, really? Yeah, and and it's like there's a scenario where if if certain things happen next year, I'm just done and I'm ready to move on. 
Well, um, so here's the thing. If he doesn't get rid of Blake Baker, my confidence in Manny goes down, like, so drastically. After yeah. that kind of performance, if you don't fire your defensive coordinator, yeah. then then I don't know what. Yeah. You can't you can't allow the most yard like yards of offense and 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 points in in a home game in the in the history of the University of Miami program and not fire your defensive coordinator. Agreed. That that was so pathetic. Yeah. And so humiliating. I mean, would that would get that well in here? And you know what's funny is because before because the night that we recorded with wholesome and we were previewing the unc game you yeah. know we talked about Bob bolden's comments on instagram and everybody being so hyped for next season in alabama and i was saying that nobody seems to be hyped for the biggest home game that we've had since notre dame three years ago yeah and the worst thing that could have possibly happened happened yeah man i I mean, I didn't, I didn't pr- predict that we'd get blown out <laughs> on social media, but I, I could smell it coming. I mean, I didn't want to play the game. I couldn't predict a win. Um, I didn't predict a loss, but I, I refused to predict the Hurricanes winning that game. And it just, it had all the makings of what happened. Like it just. I don't know, man. <laughs> you know, like like Duke. Who was right? that bad? The Duke game like made me want to believe that it would be different this time, and it didn't end up being different. Uh, um. So I guess let's put this loss in perspective, though. Um. You know, because I I don't want to come across as just being negative, right? Because we are eight and two. We have a lot of positive to talk about on this show. We do, we do. So the positive with this season to me is that we won four or five games that usually we don't win. Like, if this was a Miami Hurricanes team from years past, and I mean the last 15 years, um, (laughs) you know, from recent history, then we lose Pitt, we lose Virginia Tech, um, we lose NC State, and we might even lose Virginia. Um, don't you think like, Oh, 100%. I mean, those games, who, those I mean, games who's to think that we don't Louisville. Yeah. There's yeah. a, I mean, there's so many games that we could have lost. I mean, even the pit game when Derek King throws those two interceptions and especially the UAV game and the NC state game, we are luckily, we are very lucky that that came out as a W, but yeah. no, 100%. The best, like the, the, the best thing to happen that happened this year is that we, that we won those games. Yeah, because, I mean, years past, we lose those games. Let's say we lose four of the five that we named. That makes us four and six, man. And then Manny gets fired. A whole bunch of stuff happens. Um, So that is good, right? Some of the negatives, unfortunately, I mean, am I wrong in feeling like the negatives kind of outweigh the positives from this year? Um, Is that a little pessimistic? It might be. Perhaps, I mean, perhaps, because at the end of the day, we're still eight and two. We still signed a, a very, very good recruiting class. We did and, sign and a great well, class. Here's one of the best things that, that happened is that nobody really, nobody decommitted after that game. Yeah. Yes. And, and Manny is lucky. He's very lucky that nobody decommitted. Because, cause, like, I want you to be 100% straight up honest with me. Okay, we played 10 games. Okay, we only played three games against teams that were more than one game above 500. And that means better than six and five. Okay. Yeah. Um, And this is conference games, right? Um, We lost two of those. The win was NC State and their backup quarterback. Yeah. Like, do you think that we're a good team if that's our record? that we beat a bunch of 500 and under teams and then we beat I, NC State's backup QB and then we get trounced by the only two good teams that we play all year? I think 8-2 and two is 8-2, and two, but if you look deeper into it, um, it's in it. Um, yeah. but, I, but at this point, I mean, I'll take – I will take a and two every every day of the week. Now, if we can finish it up with a bowl win against – the Mike Gundy mullet wearing Cowboys of Oklahoma State. Yeah. That'd 
be very happy. How I, I want I want I want to ask your opinion on that because you called it. We're going to the the damn Cheez It Bowl. Yeah, dude, that's that's well, what I, 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 I have to be completely honest. I didn't know that they renamed it from the Russell Athletic Bowl. Yeah. And so when you said Cheez It Bowl, I thought that you were just like making jokes and it wasn't a real thing. Yeah. We are actually going to the Cheez It Bowl. I know. And, we're uh, we're playing house- in a bowl named after cheesy crackers. <laughs> oh god how confident are you heading into that game i have zero percent confidence yeah i and, I'll, I'll be i mean we have one bowl win since 06 yeah so um let, let me read off the the acc standings though to just to drill my point home in in the the caliber of teams that we beat this year okay so we beat pittsburgh they're six and five we beat Virginia Tech. They're five and six. We beat Virginia. They're five and five. Um, we beat Louisville. They're four and seven. We beat Florida State. They're three and six. And we beat Duke. They're two and nine. Okay. And then we did beat NC State. They're eight and three. Uh, that was solid. That that was the most solid one of the year. It was. I mean, they did. They were playing their backup quarterback, uh, but that was our best win. Yeah, but but do you see where I'm getting at with that though? Is we beat like <laughs> we we beat two teams that were better than 500. Yeah, and, and so here's the thing: is is we can we can call the eight and two an incomplete. I I'm not ready to celebrate it because here's the thing: if next year we, I mean, say that the it's back to a regular schedule and we go seven and five or eight and four, then I'm gonna call this year fool's gold. Yeah, because we didn't beat any good teams. And so if we get to next year and like, you know, it's like, oh, wow, we're barely better than 500 again. Then I'm going to be like, well, then I guess last year wasn't a good year. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, it, it makes 100 percent sense. It all depends on Derek King. It does. And it does. whether or not that he comes back. If he comes back, I think we, we can repeat the success that we had this year. If he doesn't. And and this all also depends on, you know, if we can get another quarterback from the transfer portal, if, if King leaves. But even so, I mean, yeah. that kind of talent at quarterback is very, very rare. He's legit. I mean, he's oh. very good. I just, I mean, maybe I'm reading too far into this, but I feel like there's some, some things that are concerning in the oh, fact absolutely. that... After the UNC game, we again had, you know, a player say that not everyone was buying in. It's like, oh. okay, Manny, what's the problem then? Because last year people weren't buying in. We had a drug problem in the QB room. We had people breaking curfew. We had people not even prepared for FIU, and we lost. And now, again, there's two different times where we have to say that there's players not buying in. At what point is the coach accountable for that? Because. Oh. Yeah, 100%. Because guess what? Everyone is coaching 20-year-old guys, okay? 20-year-olds are idiots, mostly. That's true. But guess what? Every college team is full of 20-year-olds, okay? So, like, that's not an excuse. It, it goes to how you manage people, you know? And, yeah. And, like... They follow the example of their leader. Exactly. And do you want do you want a hot take? <laughs> I, yeah. Uh, this... This podcast is built on hot takes. Well, this is perhaps scorching. And here's one of my biggest concerns is you have this embarrassing loss, okay? You you immediately go into a press conference and say, this loss was a great opportunity for all the kids that want to come play at Miami, which I hated that, dude. I hated yeah. that so much because what that is is that's politics. Like, that is such a political BS spin on a f- complete failure, <laughs> you know? Like, mm-hmm. he's tr- he's trying to turn his failure in this game into, you know, a positive, right? I hate it because it's easy to see through, and it's stupid, and I feel sorry for anyone that bought into it. But what scares me is, you know who probably won't buy into that is Ed Reed. Yeah. Do you I really mean, do you think Ed Reed is really walking away from this year where we only beat teams that were under 500 and he's thinking, yeah, that was a good season. Well, I mean, it, we got um, a, we got our cheeks I, clapped by any decent team that stepped on the field with us. 
but then we we can beat teams under 500. I highly